Sí. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this webinar brought to you by Bursa Malaysia, and that is managed by our company LifeChamp. Our webinar today is titled How to Detect Financial Warnings in Companies. Welcome, everybody. My name is Shen Chu. I'm the moderator for this uh, session. And uh, today, we're going to talk about how to detect financial warnings in companies. Now, from time to time, there are companies whose share price crash in a matter of a few days and it, uh, wiping out billions of dollars from the stock market. And uh, it is very important for us, you know, to learn how do we uh, uh, detect all these kind of financial warnings before it happens so that we can uh, preserve our capital and prevent equity win, right? Today, we're going to look into uh, many area ways on how we can detect these kind of warnings in companies before it happens. Uh, we'll do our best to see what are the telltale sign that this is going to happen. And we have invited a very accomplished speaker to share with us, you know, what are the telltale signs in these uh, companies that are struggling. So before we begin, uh, as usual, disclaimer, whatever we share in this session is only for educational purpose. So in no way that we give any recommendation for you to buy or sell any list of securities that we mentioned here. If you decide to make any investment risk, you're 100% responsible for all your uh, investment decisions. All right. So allow me to briefly introduce our speaker today. And uh, he is the managing partner of MRR Consulting, dealing mainly with business appraisal, investment, and financial training. He's a charter financial analyst charter holder uh, Charter Accountant of MIA, Fellow of Certified practice, Practicing Accountant, CPA, Australia, Certified Fraud Examiner, Certified Merger and Acquisition Advisor, International Certified Valuation Specialist, and is also a registered member of the Business Valuers Association Malaysia and a member of Malaysian Institute of Accountants. Presently, he's a licensed investment advisor by the Securities Commission of Malaysia. He's administered so, Mr. Nui, happy to have you here today to share with us about how do we detect early warnings in the company. All right. How are you today? <laughs> good, good, good. Thanks, Shane. All right. Hi. Uh, thank you, uh, Shane. Uh, hi. Good evening to everyone. Uh, Today, I will share with you on the why does an audited financial account uh, provide uh, assurance, but it's actually not uh, fraud through. And then learn about the detecting financial, detecting all rated warnings, and then uh, liquidities, uh, management related, and strategy related warnings. Okay. Uh, so now, start with the first part. Okay, uh, why in audited financial accounts, uh, sometimes actually, you know, we cannot rely uh, fully and what are the areas actually we need to uh, be, be careful, okay? Now, audits actually, you know, uh, involve you know, an independent evaluation of a company's financial uh, records by an uh, certified auditors, okay? So the purpose actually to provide assurance uh, that the financial statements are free from any material uh, misstatement and are presented fairly in, in accordance with the accounting principles. 
Yeah. However, so we need to understand some um, scope limitations. So all these are conducted uh, on a test basis and then primarily on the identifying material misstatements, uh, but not, not all inaccuracies. Okay, so you must understand that uh, this actually, you know, the scope of limitations and then inherent limitation will be audit do not you know function as an absolute guarantee that uh, these are sure fraud free. Yeah? Uh, so sometimes uh, the they may have disagreement uh, with the, the companies. Uh, uh, company may override or controls. Okay. Uh, then next one will be uh, reasonable assurance. So what your auditors actually you know provide is actually you know uh, reasonable but not absolute uh, assurance. Okay. So on the fairness of the financial statements and not guarantee of future uh, viability of uh, fraud detections. So basically it means that overall, when you look at the financial statements, you need to be aware that uh, uh, what actually, this company, when they actually produce this financial statement, so you need to make sure that uh, the numbers can talk to you. So sometimes actually people say, how to make the number talk to you? So is it make sense to you, you know, all these numbers? Uh, so uh, some examples, uh, sometimes companies, uh, very simple examples will be, if a company sells 100 million sales, the sales levels, uh, but if I say the, the company values, uh, market cap uh, into a few billions, uh, uh, then you need to ask whether it makes sense or not make sense uh, with that kind of, uh, sales level, but can actually support the value of companies in terms of billions. So it may have some exceptionals, but sometimes you may need to question whether you know, the share price base basically is actually supported by cer certain parties or not. Okay. Uh, then uh, sometimes you need to check through uh, the numbers, whether uh, the num a lot of times the noise behind the, the, the companies. Uh, uh, sometimes actually the numbers are actually good, but uh, in the end do have some problems. Okay, uh, so that's why uh, investor need to understand. Uh, we will go through some case studies later on. Uh, I will show you the examples uh, uh, that uh, you maybe encounter. Okay, uh, the numbers actually looks very good, but because it's actually high depths, in the end actually the the company actually went bankrupt. Okay, uh, so need to look through the numbers. Uh, so basically, our role basically is to detect all these warnings. Uh, I'll explain to you shortly. Okay. Now, first one. What are the things you know, uh, resulting in a decline in the sales? So sometimes you know, the physical volume actually you know, uh, drop, the prices for sales or services drop, then increase in actual sales returns. These are, in conclusion, it basically is if you see a company drop in sales, uh, you need to get some warning ready. Okay. Uh, so sometimes why actually drop in sales? So sometimes because of the, uh, their business actually, you know, going through, uh, if let's say it's overall industry actually fa facing downturns, then it's okay. Okay. But if let's say, you know, it's only specific to the companies, uh, then you need to check through whether the drop in sales actually makes sense, not make sense. Okay. Like examples over here, uh, this is actually one company's X, Y, Z. Okay. Uh, this actually the uh, we cannot mention company names. Uh, this actually company X Y Z. So if you look through uh, the cumulative reports, uh, if let's say the company sales uh, is actually the latest fourth quarter is actually forty million, uh, but the loss is actually eighteen million. So is it okay? Uh, so basically, you know, the loss is actually more than the, the revenue. So to me, this is actually a big warning. Uh. If you look through uh, the cumulative the quarters that they have, so basically is a uh, uh, the recent quarter actually show a big drop. So to me, uh, be careful already, okay? But before they actually show the results, in fact, actually the share price uh, plunged a lot, okay? Uh, so be careful, okay? So key point basically is the company actually drop in sales, actually not a good sign, okay? Especially, you know, the loss that they incur even more than the the, the revenue, uh, then really, you know, you need to be aware, uh, if possible, my view is actually impossible cut, okay? uh cut the the uh cut loss okay uh, because i think tough ready tough ready okay i'm not saying that it cannot turn around but to me it's actually tough okay now next one uh 
the resulting is drop in actually gross margin. So what are things actually cross a uh, drop the uh, in margins? Sometimes actually expansions, then change of the product mix, uh, decline in actually you no know, revenue due to the lower selling prices, excess capacities declining revenues volume, uh, increase in costs associated with the general cost increase, uh, forex, uh, favorable for forex movement. Sometimes you know, lower gross margin of acquired companies. So that's why, you know, cause a de decline in gross margin. Then what well, things actually drop, cause an increase uh, in selling price, sellings and general and administrative expenses. Eh? Okay. Uh, expansions ahead of sales growth, uh, decline in actually revenue due to lower volume, increase in admin costs. Okay. Uh, Last time, actually, one one company is uh, one listed companies. They always uh put a lot of uh money uh, in advertising. Uh. So in the end, if you ask me, uh, uh how the company, I think the company, uh, I think gone already. Okay, because they even though they they actually do have sales, but actually the the cost, the expenses, the market expenses, uh, the 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 income that they get, they cannot cover for the the marketing costs. So that's why then in the end actually gone. Okay. Uh, so my view here basically is that uh you look through the numbers actually uh they can sustain or not. Okay. Because if you continue to incur losses, uh, then someone need to come up money uh, to support the growth. So and furthermore, actually the, the company actually uh, in the end, the whole industry actually got competitive. So in the end, they're supposed to get the kind of sales in the end. Uh, because of the high losses, uh, then the whole company actually uh, have problems. Uh. Then unfavorable for a currency movement also can affect them. Now, next one will be resulting in the non-recurring charge against the income uh, from the continuing continuing operations. Uh. For example, all the write downs, okay, uh, impairments, uh, write down inventory receivables, you know, impairments of their assets, okay. So basically, if you see all these write downs normally happen during a uh, bad time, you will see a lot of uh, write downs, receivables, inventory, fixed assets, or impairments. Uh, so all these check through whether it's because of the general uh, economic downturn. So tend to have this, okay? Everyone also facing the same problem, or because of that particular companies. If let's say due to that particular companies, then you check through whether, you know, uh, what will be the future, uh, future prospect? If let's say you know it's a, uh, one off, then maybe you want to wait, uh, for further confirmation of whether you call, but continue to to I mean want to cut loss. But if let's say you know is uh continue to have this uh impairments uh, then you need to seriously consider uh investing whether you still you know, want to invest in that that companies. So if as I said. If let's say it's overall industry, uh, economy growth actually, you know, uh, financial crisis or whatever. So normally you do have all this, you no know, account re receivable write down, impairment, all this. Uh, so all industry also having the same problems. But if let's say you know, everyone okay except that company Sony, then you need to check through. Uh, okay. Uh, sometimes you do have these restructuring events. Uh, like you no know, work, workforce reductions. Okay or some non-recurring item, as I mentioned earlier, uh, terminations of contract, uh, litigations, mergers, okay? Uh, all these terminations, okay? Uh, environment costs, all these. So, so these are all one-off things. So you need to check through, okay? Whether uh, you appear in the, sub, the next quarter's results or not, or it's just one-off only. That's why check through, okay? If it's just one-off only, and overall, later on, the economy recover, then they also recover, then it's okay. Uh, so, but if I say, you know, it's, um, if later on, continue to have the same problem, then you need to seriously consider your investment ready. Next one, basically, will be uh, profitability rated early warnings. Um, a drop in sales or decline margins, then slump is actually, you know, uh, in sales or leverage, you know, capital incentives, uh, companies, or with fixed assets. So, ever largest percentage of EBITDA. EBITDA stands for earning before interest tax depreciation and amortizations. Uh, coming from the non-recurring, non-sustainable, non-operating. So, sometimes you'll see, sometimes companies that do have the income come from other areas. 
So you need to check through, okay? Uh, so sometimes they do have the other incomes. Uh, basically, a lot, a lot of times, uh, we may not be able to see these exceptional items uh, uh, clearly. So sometimes they hide under other income. So that's why you need to check through um, the, in the incomes come from uh, whether it's actually normal operations or due to the non-recurring. Uh, non-recurring means uh, not normal, not the normal business operations. Okay. So if let's say for non-operating uh, sources, uh, for example, uh, disposal gains, all this. So sometimes they boost the profits, but their profit may not be uh, sustainable in futures. Then sales of assets with gains make up of the greater and greater percentage of incomes. Now, profitability greater warnings uh, sometimes uh, can be due to the order uh, backlog decline in several uh, consecutive periods, increase in fixed assets, okay, in addition of the increased revenues. So you see, uh, glove like glove industries. Uh, <laughs> I remember the. Uh, one interviews uh conducted uh, I, uh, I think AEC interview interview me during the uh when the I think the peak periods uh, I think towards the year end ready uh when the the glove stock some glove stocks you know hit all time high I say that if you see that industries uh, everyone expand at the same time uh, all expand the production at the same time so, so you need to be worried already. Okay, because that industry is like glove industries. Uh, if everyone expand the productions, uh, a lot of times actually, you know, uh, the moment the decline in sales only, uh, the will lead to losses already. Uh, that's why what happened to, to the glove today is uh, okay. And the glove industry uh, always have these type of patterns, always like that. Okay, not the first time. Uh, each time then they have any virus outbreaks, uh, uh, so they always have that kind of everyone uh, go crazy and then. Uh, then the, everyone, uh, the glove company, start to expand the productions. Uh, then later on, uh, the, with the sales decline, the whole I mean, the, the virus outbreak may be over. Then you see the, the demand actually drop sharply. Uh, then they start to show high losses already. Okay. Uh, so these are profitability warnings. Uh, okay. When everyone expand the production at the same time, uh, ex buy more machine, uh, expand the productions, no? uh, fix assets, uh, then it's actually a big problem already. So underestimating the amount of bad debts in the allowance accounts, then high inventory level over uh, previous years. Okay, so check through you know, the inventory. Uh, let's say you know, uh, company like uh, certain companies that do have high inventory. Okay, uh, always have high inventory. Okay, but uh, you need to check through. Okay. Uh, if let's say you know the in the inventory days are increasing, uh, uh, then maybe may show some problems already for the companies. That means that they have problem to sell out the the products already. Uh, but it need we need to check through whether it's actually you know it's like for example uh like one of the uh stainless steel fast fasteners companies uh in listed in Busan. Uh, when they actually done, when the steel prices actually you know, uh, drop to low levels, uh, they increase the inventory. So when they increase the inventory, so sometimes you need to check through the inventory whether it's actually is a raw material, uh, way progress or finished goods. So if let's say the drop in actually you know the steel prices, uh, steel prices, uh, they tend to buy the raw materials, uh, uh, higher volumes. So so it, sometimes you thought actually you know because they cannot sell the stainless steel fastener. But you need to check through the annual reports. So if let's say it's a raw material and you know it's actually you know lower steel prices, then it's okay. Uh, then when the things the steel prices are getting higher, then you know the cost actually cheap. Uh, so the profit margin will go up. This is what happened to to one of the stainless steel uh, fasteners companies. Okay. Uh, so need you need to check through whether it's the finished goods or or raw materials. Like for example, some companies, uh, um, thing like. Uh, uh, I think Padini, okay. Uh, so sometimes they actually you know the you see the inventory go up. So then you may ask actually what happened to this company? So, so you need to check through whether it's a raw material or it's actually you know it's a finished goods. So it's actually finished goods. Uh, then you may ask why they actually you know uh, inventory actually, uh, went up higher. So a lot of time may be due to their expansion to new outlets. Uh, okay. So sometimes when people come to buy, you cannot look at the catalog, right? <laughs> you need to touch on the 
actual clothes, all this. So that's why uh, each time they expand to new outlets, more outlets, uh, so you see the inventory actually will uh, go out. Now, next one, build out in inventory. That's why you check through whether you know, it's due to the dynamic high tech. Okay, uh, then it's actually, you know, uh, high tech companies, then it's actually may not be a good sign uh, if I say no build out inventories. Contractors, uh, uh, buildings in uh, cost over build billings uh, could signal a loss. Then deterioration of the uh, cost margins as a percentage of the sales. Okay. Uh, sometimes you uh, signal poor job costing, uh, unexpected increase in raw materials, and they cannot pass to the cost to the customers. Uh, uh, then they actually know uh, bad signs. Okay, so need to check through. Uh. Then our significant drop in uh, actually gross margin usually indicate more competitive pressures uh, or some other factors. Uh, okay, now next one basically is look at the interim statements show decline margin. A lot of time uh, the margin actually drop. Then need to check through. What happened caused the margin drop? Okay, uh, so you like you see the Tesla share price are uh, coming down, right? Because actually the cut cut in prices. So we cut in prices, then you see, uh, they still make profit, but they're actually making uh lower profits. So that's why you see the once actually you know the cut prices profit margin down, the share price actually will come down. Uh, account receivables aging uh, become uh begins to indicate more accounts over ninety days. Increase the raw material, as I mentioned, cannot pass to the customers. Then decline margins, unable to, to reduce the operating expenses, okay, uh, due to fixed costs. Next one, basically liquidity related uh, early warnings. So liquidity problems because of the increase in the overdraft indication, uh, uh, constraint actually working capitals positions. Uh, this is actually referring to the, the liquidity problems. So build out in inventory, they need money, uh, uh, then they're unable, unable to get the line of credits. Okay. Uh, so come sometimes uh, they expand too fast, uh, they cannot get uh banks to support them. Uh, so they have a liquidity problems. So rapid growth and related uh expansion activities. So sometimes uh, expand too fast, then dividend of withdrawal in excess of earnings. Uh where the network actually you know, is declining, leverage actually increase. Okay, sometimes you no know, company uh may borrow money to pay dividends. Uh, uh, so sometimes actually happens. So combination of the increase the fixed assets plus the increase the inventory, okay, uh, then resulting in neg uh, negative cash flows. Then uh writing on of uh, account payables. So the payable days uh, indicate uh, getting higher. So it shows that uh, they may have problem to pay the su suppliers. Uh, Okay, then next one will be increase in the payable days with the shrinking inventory, build up in account receivables, sales terms change, okay, uh, significant uh, increase in the days of receivables. So uh, when you look through, you know, they increase the actually, you know, uh, receivable days or inventory days. Uh, so sometimes actually with the declining in sales, you no know, actually problems ready. Okay, higher usage of line of credit, okay, higher, Higher than the normal borrowings, the borrowing increase, then frequent call from the other creditors, then you see uh, bad signs ready. Okay. Uh, then payment always delay late, then reduction in the cash balance in the bank. Uh, when you see cash balance drop uh, sharply, uh, then check through what actually caused the, the balance, actually cash balance drop, or increased loan from the shareholders, or constant loan re requests for working capitals. Through expenses continue to, to grow beyond what is actually you know, supported by growth, then inability in the cash flow from operation to cover their 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 long term debts and interest expense. So now I'll share with you uh, one example here. Okay, so so what do you think? This company is okay, not okay. Company A. Okay, so this company A. Okay, so they show actually jump in revenue. You no. Know? Uh, Jump in revenues, profit actually go up, went up. Then it's in fact the EBITDA margin increased, no? Okay, gross margin maintained. Net margin actually drop, drop a bit. The EBITDA margin actually increased. Okay, so you see the profit actually grow, no? Jump by twenty four percent. So, okay, not this company A. Uh, so we should not mention the name, lah. Okay. Uh, then if you look through further, uh, this company, this company is actually in oil and gas. Okay, so. 
then the total asset actually also increase. Okay, at the same time, actually the, the borrowing also increase. So when you look at these numbers, actually, you know, is it uh cause any warning to you? Okay, then you look at the cash flow problems, okay. Uh you look at the cash flow problems, okay. The operating cash flow actually increased, okay, but the investing cash flow actually, you know, continue higher, higher. So if you understand free cash flows, uh, free cash flow basically is these two numbers add up together. Uh, this consecutively two years uh, is actually negative. And that's why they they don't have enough cash flows. So they need to borrow from the bank. That's why the bank borrowing actually increased, jump very high. Okay. So uh, is it good or bad? So this is actually liquidity problems uh, for the companies. Okay. Uh, so my view here basically is this company expands quite fast. Okay. The profit shows yes, but the key problem basically is that the they expand too fast and then they buy fixed assets and then they bought with the borrow monies and and they actually the borrowing uh, getting higher and higher okay and the uh, the from the early on two zero one eight is actually you know uh if you look at the borrowing uh, divided by their their equities uh, point profit point five later on jump more than one time so basically these are you need to check through whether the company able to support you know, with that kind of high debts, you know, uh, especially oil and gas uh, industry. Okay. Uh, so what happened to this company A or this company A? Eh? Okay. <laughs> the latest de developments basically is that uh, if you look through the company A, the so from 2021, the sales uh, last time 1 billion plus uh, drop all the way to the 2022. Uh, uh, four quarter drop to 170 million and you see the losses actually incur okay basically this company gone already so this company actually gone okay uh, so the key part basically is that but the number the number i showed to you the sum is actually 2018 numbers so the key point basically is that when you see the company actually grow and the free cash flow is negative free cash flow basically means that uh you take these two numbers add up together in the cash flow statements the net cash flow in operating plus the investing cash flow. So in this case, they actually, uh, free cash flow is negative about 600 million. So for 2018, two the free cash flow roughly about negative about 800 million. So you know, they're actually negative. That's why they don't have cash flow. That's why they need to borrow from the bank. So when they borrow from the bank, you know, problem already. Lah. And then with the key part, especially 2019, they actually just jump to very high levels. Okay, uh, then to me, higher than the equities, uh, then uh, you need to seriously be careful already. Even though they shows growth in sales, fantastic, everything fantastic. Okay. Uh, in the end, the holding gone. Uh, okay. Uh, my point basically is that uh, banks, uh, okay, you, the moment you borrow to many banks, uh, okay, the moment one bank say, want to ask you to, to pay, pay back, or one bank cut the line, then all banks will do the same. Okay, that's why it's quite dangerous uh, from our as an investor perspective. Uh, when you invest in high debt company, uh, always be careful uh, because when company any company that you borrow beyond uh, many banks already, uh, so normal time is okay. But the moment one bank start to cut financing only, and everyone will do the same. Uh, uh, so ask you to pay back all the, the loans, uh, and then you the holding gone already. Uh, so sometimes, so when you in, want to invest in those high debt company, you need to always understand. Okay, the risk involved. If the moment one bank cut the financing uh, or to the companies, uh, then the rest of the bank will uh, all panic and uh, all will do the same. Okay, so that's why it's quite dangerous. Uh, okay. Now, next one basically talk about the management related warnings. This one is actually uh delay in any uh management changes uh, often too late uh, to by the time they actually end up, uh it announced okay new managements or ownerships unexpected change in management turnover or key uh, personnel actually resign so check through whether you know uh, the, the key person actually okay not okay uh, so always at uh, the moment the key owner actually resigns uh, then you need to check through whether okay or not they uh, respected or they have any backgrounds okay so uh, analysts had any view or not with the, this new uh, managements okay uh, so, uh, the moment everyone actually resigns, uh, uh, for example, the sound of the company A. Uh, so, what happened to the companies? Uh, 
you look at the board of directors, uh, initially, wow, quite reputable. Sir. In the end, when they have problems, uh, the, all directors actually resigns. So that's why when you see all this, this happens, you know, tough already. Uh. So when the, all of them actually resigns, uh, so really tough already. Okay. Uh, so that means something wrong somewhere in the, in the company already. Okay. And everyone want to, to be apart, I mean, to attached to this, this company anymore. Next one will be the aging management or lack of management successions. Okay. Sudden change in the duties of the CFO. Also management warning. Then uh, sometimes when you see uh, management talk about the projections of the sales and earnings, uh, sometimes uh, far beyond uh, past history. Okay. Now, uh, people ask me, eh, uh, my client asked me, you know, uh, how to, to predict eh, the market movement. I say it's very difficult, especially during these periods, eh, especially the, in US, you have a lot of uh, key companies eh, announce the results. Okay. Uh, for example, eh, the the Meta actually announced good result, but the share price dropped because uh, the, the CEO uh, say they want to venture into the AI. <laughs> the share price drops. Whereas Tesla reported bad results, huh? but because they actually want to do some, I uh, think the uh, autonomous uh, driving, all this, then the share price jump. Okay. So that's why sometimes you need to check through uh, all this because it's quite difficult to know what are the things actually. You know, uh, the share price up and down sometimes actually not caused by the, the, the result they actually announced. It's actually what they actually they intend to do. So sometimes all this, Investor may not have confidence. For example, Meta, uh, investor actually may not have confidence uh, with all these new ventures. Because last time, if you remember Meta venture into the Metaverse, so what happened to the Metaverse? So when they venture into Metaverse, in the end, actually, you know, the losses incur. Uh, so nothing, until today, nothing happened already. Uh, so that's why sometimes investors have worried. Uh, the moment you start to talk about certain projections, uh, okay, then forecast, Inadequate forecasting of the capital requirements, okay. Failure to meet the projections, then not prepared to any projections uh, as to what future earnings will be, okay. Then or customers are uh, use users uh, the free capital loans uh, to purchase uh, fixed assets, okay. Then owners actually frequently not around, okay. Then excessive uh, perks, then lifestyles uh, not consistent with the profitability of the companies then or divorce of the other family problems. Okay. Uh, so if let's say you no know, the owner actually always not around, uh, then problems. Uh, okay. Then lifestyle not consistent uh, with the profit of the companies, uh, also problems. Then uh lack of the complex or complacent uh, business management styles. So sometimes we do have listed companies, uh, the they're happy with what they have, but you see the company actually the result okay, but actually, you know, the the key members are already, you know, uh, aging. I mean, uh, already, but they don't have successions, and then sometimes they're happy with what they have, but they the business actually stables. As a result, you look at the share price also, uh, stables. Uh, so that's why, uh, and no interest in the companies. Okay, uh, so sometimes when you buy into this company, sometimes, uh, you see the the price actually declining. You know? Uh, over years declining uh, in a small, small percentage every uh, few months. Uh. So in the end, uh, if you long term, you notice that it actually drop a lot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so because the people cannot see any growth. Then beside this will be like, sometimes uh, management warning is due to the, the growth that you know, strikes the ability of the companies. So a lot of time people are, the listed company actually, owners actually know where that the, their skill actually do have expiry dates. So they have skill to run the small business into relatively, relatively big, big, uh, big companies, but they may not have the skill to make it big. Okay, uh, for example, uh, they may have a skill to have hundred million run into one billion, but from one billion want to grow to ten billion or twenty billion, but they may not have they may not have the skills. So that's why you need to check through uh, whether they have skills. Okay, to run the big, big business. So that's why sometimes uh, when the business actually grow up to the certain size, uh, they need to engage outsiders to actually to grow the companies. Okay. Uh, then next one basically is overpaying for uh when they talk about the talk about the rapid growth, and then without proper knowledge uh to handle it, okay. 
then overpaying for acquisition, poor housekeeping, or lack of interaction between the management and labels. Okay, uh, so so sometimes they want to talk about the growth, but may not have the knowledge on how to handle it. So that's why these are all warnings. Okay, uh, change in the attitude, behavior, no backup management. Uh, so sometimes you see some companies actually you know expand too fast. Uh, uh, I know last time actually one listed companies, uh, uh, they actually expand quite fast. And then a lot of times when they expand quite fast and then a lot of times they, uh, their employees, uh, they mentioned to me that, that the owner actually really expand the business. But the key issue here is when the owner actually expand quite fast, okay, and expand too fast, uh, the back rooms, uh, risk management may not catch up to, to the, the growth. Uh, then later on may have problems. Uh, then sometimes the management do not understand the, the cost of growth, okay, uh, inherent uh, sales mentalities. Then not keeping up with the technology, inflexible, no, uh, of the senior management coupled with the weak board di directors, okay, litigations. When you see nowadays, you see the quarterly results. Uh, at the back, actually do have a lot of litigations. Eh? The moment you see a lot of litigations, uh, many pages of litigations, uh, it means that uh, the owners actually have no time to look at the business ready. Every day, they just spend time on talk, whether to sue people or being sued by the uh, by people. So that's why they will spend a lot of time with the lawyers only. They don't have time on operations ready. Uh, so that's why check through. Okay. Uh, so always check through. Okay. When at the backs have many pages of litigation, you know the owner have no time to talk about the growth of companies. Really. Most of the time, almost every day, they sit down with the lawyers only to sue people or or, or being sued at people's, then fraud, uh, tax fraud or evasion. Then next one basically is the external uh, environment rated warnings. So look at the often actually best indicator uh, earning declines outside the companies. Okay, uh, so suddenly you know uh, interest rates uh, change or inter interest rates may affect the industry. Okay, so sometimes you no know, external things actually may happen change in economic stations, okay? Uh, you asked me this year, uh, to me, this year, second half will be, uh, continue to be tough. Okay, I will say will be tough, okay? Uh, Malaysia should be okay, but I think US, you see the growth actually coming down already, okay? That's, that's the reason why sometimes some economic reports start to say that we are uh, scared of stagflation, okay? I mean to say high inflation, but slower economic, slower economic growth. So some signs showing that it's slow, slow downs. Uh, so weather will, uh, will cause no slow down go wide. That's why uh, yet to be seen. And then key part basically is that the whole thing is actually, you know, the, the, if less, the chances of Trump coming back is actually is there. So the risk actually may be higher. So that's why these are the things actually affecting worldwide economies. Uh, and everyone start to position themselves. If I say what happened is actually uh change to no Trump actually coming back, then they impose tariff on China product hundred percent increase. Uh. then what will happen to the rest of the world? Uh, all these change in economic situations, uh environments, no interest rate environments, and Trump is actually one lower interest rates and weak US dollars. Okay, uh, so that's why things change, no. So need to look into the uh changes in economic conditions. Next one will be change in actually technology. Uh, we have AI right now, may affect some industry, uh, have a tough time to survive. Then change technologies, then cost of productions, efficiencies, uh, then industry downturns. Okay. Uh, so you can see you know, the soybean price come down, CPO price are also coming down. So what if let's say you know the uh, Trump come back, that will end the the Ukraine, Ukraine uh, and uh, Russia conflicts, then the whole things, the the price may go down for may go down further, no? Okay, uh, so that's why you know it's actually things actually you no know, slowing down. Okay, then changes in actually you know, industry slow down in actually you know in home building, fundamental change in industry. Industry, that's for example, the, the uh, regulations in industry airlines. So sometimes actually due to fundamental change in the industries. Okay, uh, AI actually caused some problems to some companies, uh, so that's why uh, may affect some companies because of the AI. Okay, 
Then borrowers operates in a declining competitive industry. Then uh, regulatory you know, considerations, their impact on operations, changes in competitions, market shares, or new competition come in, or overproductions, too many in the business, okay? Changes in demand, okay? So all these, uh, sometimes you know, new player come in and then you know, uh, new competition, then overcapacities, okay? Uh, and everyone cutting prices. You see the EV cars in China, China's, <laughs> uh, you ask me, you no. Know, all cutting prices. Uh. So, of course, Tesla will have tough times. Uh. Okay. So, then it depends on how to survive. Uh. Okay. And then changes in demand for products and services. So, next one is actually you know, management uh, communications. So, information flows slow. Okay. Uh, then, principal always not around uh, to answer phone calls. Lack of contact. Uh, lack of communications. Not returning call. Uh, then hard get in touch with the management. Then management don't want to answer questions. Okay, uh, so they only talk about growth only, and then don't talk about other things. Uh. Okay, no knowledge about how, uh, about why negative trend are occurring. Okay, so sometimes uh, you see uh reluctant to talk about the discuss or the trend all this. So sometimes you need to look through. Okay, uh, when you attend meetings, uh, okay, see whether they hide anything or not. Okay. So, check through, okay. Uh, sometimes uh, you see certain uh, listed company owners, uh, they only talk about good part of the companies only. The rest on the negative things that uh, they hide, okay. Why? Because when you look through the annual reports, you already know the companies. What are actually key problems? But you notice that they always talk about good things only, but they avoid all the, the bad things. So, that's why staff, uh, Sometimes people ask, uh, ask me, you know, how do we know these owners can be trusted, cannot be trusted? Uh, I, last time I worked as analyst, uh, part-time, full-time together, about 16 years. Okay. Uh, so what I can share with you is that how we analysts know whether this owner can be trusted, not cannot be trusted. We look at their future prospect. So you look through uh, the future prospect, what they say. So good one, uh, good one, uh, for example, good one will be, they say that, oh, very tough environment. So you will listen, you read through the, the quarterly report uh, or annual report, or you get worried. You know, it's a very tough operating situation. Then the next next quarter result, hey, okay, the profit okay. Then you read through the future prospect again. They say, oh, very tough, very tough operating operation. Then you, the following quarter, okay, you know. Ah, good one always scared you uh, with the quarterly results. But the result are okay, you know. Uh, even, even better, you know. But bad one will be, they already incur high losses already. They say, well, we are optimistic of future performance. But you already know already, when they announce results, they already know, you take two months to result, report results, you already know your, your future prospect, good or bad. Yet, uh, they continue to tell lie uh, and then to say, oh, we are optimistic. But you see, the next following quarter, the loss even worse, even higher, a laggy loss. So these type of companies, uh, that's why we, to people like us, uh, we look at this type of owner, oh, yeah, no, la, this owner always tell lives. Uh. Uh, so you, my, my principle, my, my belief is actually, you know, you can cheat some people all the time, all people some of the time, but not all people all the time. Okay? You cannot run. Okay? To me, it's actually, you already know. The annual reports, where you have four months to prepare the annual reports. The most important part in annual reports will be the, the pages on that quote, that paragraph on future prospect. By the time you future prospect and you announce the annual reports, you in April, you already know because a lot of time business already have a three month to six month orders. That means if by April, you already know roughly until September to October situation ready. You already know this company, okay. Your company this year performance, okay, no, okay. That's why your future performance should be quite close to the actual. So if you see not consistent, uh, that means this owner, not honest. Uh, not honest. Uh. That's how we know. That's why, how we know the owners actually you know, can be trusted or cannot be trusted. Okay. Sometimes people say, ah, yeah, this owner cannot run. Uh. Uh, so uh, they, you talk about many, a lot of times, bad things that you're heightened. Uh, so they don't want to answer questions. So, so then you know problem already. Comment from borrowers on problems. 
Then in discussion, customer focus on sales growth, but does not uh, talk about the profitabilities. Then only talk about positive things, the some mentioned, you know, all neg negative, all high. Okay. In Hokkien, we say siam. <laughs> They're all high. Uh, so financial communication warning will be delay in financial statements. Ha. I mentioned to you, I work as analyst for 16 years, uh, part-time, full-time together. So, based on my 16-year experience, uh, any company delay in the announcing the financial statement, uh, normally bad. Uh, never come across good one. Uh, <laughs> never come across. The moment delay only, uh, oh, God. You see, the, the moment delay only, a lot of times, share price drop already. Uh, second part, they quarrel with or auditors, uh, auditors or accountants normally bad. So a lot of times you ask me, uh, uh, I call this as a cockroach theory. Uh. It means that uh, you open up the cabinet, uh, you see one cockroach, right? Then you close the, then you take the bygone spray and then the cockroach die. Then you close the, the, the cabinet. The next day you open up, oh, two cockroaches. Then you say, never mind, I take the bygone and spray, spray, spray. Then you close the, 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 the door again. Then the next day you open up, Four cockroaches now. Why? Because at the back of the cabinet, all cockroaches. So when you see the delay only, uh, this uh, bad sign, right? that's why a lot of time people say, so how? I say very easy only. Man. Cut loss. Ah. So you say, delay only? Man. Oh, delay. Ah. The moment they see the actual results, ah, really bad. One. Uh, so based on my experience, the company delay only, you know, never turn out to be okay. Okay, ne never turn out. All bad one. Okay. And the, when they announce it, the share price will drop even further. Uh, okay. So that's why or next may delay. Uh, they quarrel with accountant, they quarrel with auditors. Uh, sue here, sue there, sue regulator, all this. Huh? All gone one. Uh. Okay. Uh, so uh, to me, this one all gone. Uh. Okay. Uh, delay in fixing financial information, fix the problems, delay in getting financial statement promptly, all this gone. Okay. Uh, so, so take note of that, okay? Uh, never turn out to be okay, one, okay? So delay in getting financial statements. Now, another thing basically is that, like we are coming to the first quarter result already, right? Good one uh, will tend to report the result earlier. Bad one uh, will wait until uh, the last day only. Good one will tend to be a few days earlier so that the uh, analysts have time to analyze the company. So if I say the result, they say, hey, normally they're, Announce the before the ending, uh, because you have two two months to prepare the, to announce the results. So it means to say first quarter end with 31st of March already. So they have until 31st of May to announce. So normally some companies they are good one, big one, they will announce 10 days before. So by this long, this long, hey, why? No announcing the result yet. You wait until the last day. Ah, then last day only you sweat ready. Lah. So normally they report earlier, right? They have to wait until the last day. Why why? Wait until the last day. The key point basically is that because the last day, uh, everyone announced the result together. Then analysts have no time to analyze it because we were analysts. Wow, so many, a few hundred companies within one day, you know. How to analyze it? So analysts have no time to, to look at the companies. Uh, so th then they, they, they hope uh, they announce the results. Uh. Even analysts have look at the result. A lot of time, the impact will be less already because analysts have no time uh, because all announced at the same time, the last day. Uh, so... So that's why when you see delay only, oh, you problem already, problem already. So good one, a lot of times, oh, they suddenly report a good result, right? They know very good result. They try to report early. Then analysts have time to analyze because normally right, right now, nobody announced the result. Then analysts will have only one counter, so they have time to write. Then they start write good things, huh? then the time. So if I say bad, huh? then you will wait until the last day. Huh? Okay, okay. Borrower fail to to provide financials in uh, in timely manners, fail, failure to produce the interim result, as I said to you, the moment delay only, gone. Okay, chain accountant, uh, their management not particularly interested in re timely reporting. Huh? Delay here, delay there. Huh? So always remember, you be careful investing in these type of companies. Okay, chain accountant, uh, chain auditors, uh, chain from reputable, non, non reputable. Uh, so then frequent, Accounting principle change, uh, change financial years. Uh, I come across, uh, last time I come across one company, I think two companies. Oh, change, uh, change financial year. Fire changed six times. 
think it's the Dato Kramat Holding and Georgetown Holding. I think not, not listed anymore. <laughs> they change until you, you cannot compare the financial results, the financial report. Because some is six months, some is nine months, some is 12 months, some is 15 months. Basically, that five, six years, uh, you look at the annual report, basically you cannot compare because they're not 12 months, 12 months report. Some 12 months, some six months, some nine, nine months, some 15 months. Basically, you take out the report, actually you cannot compare. So, so, like that, uh, so a lot, a lot of time, uh, they want to do this, it's actually the change financial, they change financial so that you cannot compare. No? Uh, you, you, how to see, uh, this one 15 months, or, then unless you calculate it and cast, analyze it, uh, divide by 15 times 12, uh, otherwise how to compare? Uh, you cannot compare. No? Uh, so, they make you a bit difficult, okay? Then change in the financial <coughs> format or income statement. Less details on, on cost of sales. Uh, sometimes like that, they, they they want to give details. Uh, sometimes like that. Then providing only basic information. Only. Then you, you don't, don't know what's actually why, why they actually perform badly. Eh? Uh, so lack of footnotes, disclosure, inability to obtain financial information. Then next one will be strategy related. Okay. Uh, change of the change the direction of companies, okay? New product line, new location, new uh, vert vertical integration, change in business plan. So marketing, uh, marketing product line, management, fundamental change in the business, they change from wholesale, uh, okay? To retail, then management change in the strategy commitments, okay? Uh, market decline in the qualities and efficiency, then change, in the direction of the market or expansion at uh, the time when there seems to be a uh, pullback, okay? Uh, so failure to recognize the uh, change or refusal to believe change in fundamentals. Expand to new markets, okay? Uh, optimistic. Uh, a lot of times uh, they actually expand to unlimited, uh, unlimited in industry. My view here basically is that you notice that the uh, property prices getting higher, uh, construction getting higher, the key always happen happen uh in Malaysia. Okay. Uh, the moment listed companies uh, start to expand from the normal manufacturing, uh, expand into property development. Ha! Huh? God. 1998 or 1997, 1998, a lot of companies just because at that time of overheating. Uh, so they, they see a lot of companies uh, gone, have problems uh, when they expand to these areas. Uh, Okay, so that's why always understand uh, when they expand to the unrelated business at the, or the area or industry, then the management have no skills. Uh, uh, be careful. Okay, you see the share price always down because people doubt uh, they have skill to manage the kind of new business, uh, especially like for example, uh, certain manufacturing they do have a lot of, a lot of piece of uh, land, good locations. Uh, they start to venture into property development. Uh. So. They don't have the, the skill, the knowledge, but suddenly, you no, know, for manufacturing, they go into property, property developments, uh, problems, uh, because they may, they cost them the attentions uh, on this area, this new area where they don't have the skills. Uh, okay. Uh, so it's a problem. Uh, and that means they may not have time to on their existing business already. Okay. Then, uh, strategy related warnings will be unrated business, as I mentioned, take a lot. Uh, management time that unrelated business or high risk expansions, uh, or like for example, expansion of property sectors, okay, or non related business segments. You see, now, uh, you see, you don't see, uh, no, any, re any uh, regulatory parties uh, to give warning on the properties prices, but you, but you know that property prices actually in general start recovering already. Uh, not yet. My view here basically, you know, will continue, may continue to grow out for a while. Okay. But if I say, you know, jump too high in the subsequent few years' times, uh, then the history just repeat itself. Okay. Uh, my view here basically is that history always, the current situation is like 9201314. If you remember 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 4, uh ringgit versus US dollars, uh, it's actually at that time almost touching $3. No? Uh, if you remember. So why like that? Because when the US. <clears throat> money and the hot money flow out to emerging markets uh, and at that time our property price actually jumped to high levels uh, then Ben Negara gave warning uh, then you no know, 
uh, put warning on the all this measure to cool down property. So you ask me whether we'll repeat or not. We are right now maybe at like uh, 2010, 2011, that time. So the property price may actually, you know, will be go up for, for this, okay? Especially when the hot money start flow out from US. Uh. Last few years, actually money actually, because of high uh, interest rate, all went, went to uh, U, uh, US dollars, uh, okay? But once actually US cut interest rate, this money may flow out to emerging markets. Some may come to Malaysia. So be careful on that. But it will not happen right now, sir. later part, a few years later. Okay. So take note of strategy related, uh, enter into non-related business. Then management have no knowledge, okay, in those areas. Now, so I finished all my slides ready. Okay. Now it's actually, you know, uh, Q&A sessions. Okay. Any question you want to ask me? All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ui, for doing a very enlightening session <laughs> for us. You know, how do you detect, you know, early financial warnings of companies? So, uh, you know, I have a good laugh uh, listening to your jokes along the way. But, uh, you know, that's such a very wonderful session, right? If you have any question to ask our speaker today, you know, please write your questions in the Q&A box. We will uh, address your question accordingly, all right? Uh, I think earlier on, I probably dropped off the line a bit during the introduction, so apologies for the technical glitch here. Now I'm back on. Okay, write your question in the Q&A box, not the chat box, okay? So the first question I see on my screen is that, can you elaborate further on the limitations of audited financial statements? Are there specific areas within the statements that are more susceptible to manipulation? Uh... I would say nowadays, uh, uh, I will not say it's easily to manipulate the statements. Okay, I I don't think that easy to manipulate the, the statements nowadays. Uh, just that limitation means that you you cannot say that uh the statements that you see uh is actually you know definitely same as the actuals. Okay, uh, auditors and accountants actually try their best. Okay, uh, so sometimes uh. Any the specific areas actually will be something like uh how to say it's actually like um uh I would I was I will say uh they you see one 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 I can highlight to you is actually is that nowadays we do have independent director as well so uh to the extent uh, the director is actually responsible for the financial statements. So nowadays, the independent directors are also quite careful you know, in signing off the, the reports. You know. So they sit in the, the audit committees. Uh. So that's why uh, a lot of times, sometimes uh, you see these independent directors, they say, uh, is it sure or not? Sure or not? So they they try to make sure that you know, they're comfortable with the, all these numbers. Uh. So that's why I need to highlight it. Because if let's say anything go wrong, so uh, the their liability, uh, Okay, like you have court cases, I think some actually, you know, transmile uh, case actually, you know, after 10 years only, you know, charge the, I think the, the directors, uh, whoever uh, agree with the reports. So sometimes, nowadays, everyone quite careful, including uh, all the independent directors, uh, auditors as well, accountants as well. So my view here basically is that we can trust the, the financial statement, uh, just that uh, sometimes they still prepare, okay, as I say to you, according to the management uh, view, okay? So we cannot, if you ask me any specific areas, uh, hard to hard to pinpoint. Uh, but if you, my view here basically is that sometimes you see what the transmile is actually, the sales level is actually, you know, it's not, they don't have the uh, solid basis to support the sales. But to a normal investor, how do we know whether that, that sales is actually real or not real? So, and keep up basically is that you see the jump in sales and a lot of time the receivable also jump accordingly. So it's and then you see that oh basically is that they're not receiving money. It's basically it's jump in uh like happened to Transmart is basically increased three hundred million sales, uh 300, 300 million receivable at the same time the revenue also increased by three hundred uh million. So basically it's that oh, they they report actually sales. No, we don't know whether or not it's true or not true because they're not receiving money. You know? So that's why sometimes when you... But this one you can see from the, the cash flow statements. Uh. So that's why when each time they continue to have negative cash flows, uh, 
So free cash flows, uh, then you need to be warning ready. Okay, so that means they're not receiving the cash. Another receivable jump to high levels, then you need to worry. Uh. Then in the end, uh, things that have problems, as you know, the auditors refuse to, to sign the reports. Uh, nowadays, all this to all, or immediately highlight to the bursa already. So that's why uh, I think in general, I think investors are protected in that manner. So we do have in auditors, accountants, and independent directors you know, doing their jobs. Uh, so try to minimize this part. So, but you cannot say, uh, you still cannot say totally uh, uh, okay you know, the financial statements. Uh, thanks, Mr. Wing. Uh, I think just now you mentioned about independent director, the importance of having independent director. Um, can you comment on, you know, the possibility of independent director uh, being actually non-independent? You know, could, could they be, you know, uh, the associates or friends of all these uh, executive directors or the management? What do you think? Uh? Uh, my view here basically is I think uh, I'm not too sure the process wise. I think uh, they, they have a pool or independent directors. I think need to get uh, a point from the pool. Okay. Uh, of course, they try to find someone uh, <laughs> that thing may be good to them. But basically, is that the independent directors uh, need to be responsible for, if I say the financial statements, uh, later on, discover back for problems. Okay, any problems. So, and we're talking about this liability actually, you know, carry with you for, for uh, many years. So that's why we, they need to make sure that whatever they sign, sign off the reports, uh, make sure that it's actually okay. So that's why sometimes nowadays you look at board director trainings, uh, uh, especially independent director, uh, board director trainings, they're talking about whether worth the risk or not with the, the director fee that we, we receive. Uh. So because high risk, uh, high risk, because sometimes we don't know. Then you say whether or not they are the independent directors, whether independent or not. To me, whether <laughs> independent directors independent or not, I think they're from, they're from the pool. Uh. So I think we should, I think should in general, they are doing their best. Okay, I would not say uh, definitely they're not independent. I would say they are doing their best. Uh. Because the, the, the liability is actually with them. Uh, thanks, Mr. Ui. Yeah. Um, now, just now you covered, you know, uh, four, uh, more than four, I think, also yeah, yes. uh, got... Uh, so you yeah, talk about uh, profitability, liquidity, management, strategy, rated warnings. You also talk about communication, you know, as a bonus and so on. Uh -huh. So would you be able to rank in terms of importance, you know, uh, which is the most important red flag among all this? You know, is it probability or is it uh, communication? So key numbers, key numbers just now, if you remember, I share with you, there's one company, eh? the moment drop in sales is actually a bad sign. Okay, sales drop, then bad sign already. So, uh, for information, I basically, I do browse through all the listed company results, all in Musa. Okay, very simple, you go to the Musa, Busa uh, coming announcements, uh, then you actually uh you you uh you sort based on financial results. So I when the reporting season I do sort based on the financial results. So all the results I just browse through it. So the moment I how I look at the result, okay, no, okay. I see the more I see the sales drop, ah yeah, this company sales drop. Don't need to look at them. So look at the sales drop, then loss losses. Ah, then forget it already. I will not look at them already. Wow, sales increase, profit increase. Ah, this is why I will pay attention to them already. Then if I say, hey, quite good, no? The price actually quite cheap. Then we'll start jump in prices as sales grow, profit also in jump in high levels. Oh, any percent jump, no? Ah, then I need to look at look at the results. So then I even read through the, the announcements. So if I say uh, uh, before market close, uh, oh, and especially big one, uh, Oh, then <laughs> normally buy before and <laughs> before market close because the next day analysts start to re read the reports then start to write the reports then the share price will jump really because you see the sales growth profit growth oh, and the consistently growth you know? uh, but this one apply to those big one blue chip shares good one okay uh, so my point basically is that sales numbers actually number one and profit levels. I see uh, thanks for the highlight you know uh, the next question is how can investors differentiate between temporarily setbacks and signs of a more fundamental problem within the company. So basically is that if let's say the temporary setback will be, let's say for, for example, uh, recessions. So we may have, may happen this year. Okay. I will not say re totally re recession. It's actually a temporary setback. 
you know, economic growth slow down. Okay, uh, so the technical recession also possible. Okay, uh, because report sub US start to report no slower GDP ready. So my point basically is that if overall industry, economy, country economy slowing down. Worldwide slowing down, then it's due to that that reason. Then it's okay. But if everyone everyone doing well, suddenly that combination not doing well, ah, then need to be very quite careful. Look through the whole things. Ah. Uh, so that's why I uh, remember one bank. Uh, every bank actually will take opportunity uh, during financial crisis to write off, you know, to clean out the loan loan portfolios. But everyone expect things to recover, economy recovery. Suddenly that that banks uh, start to report high high losses high provision high, high provision and loan loss Ayoh. uh <laughs> so stressful why because we as analysts uh, how do we expect that these things can happen uh so we don't expect this to happen so if let's say everyone doing well suddenly you actually only one not doing well then people start to worry hey is it due to your company your management your problems because normally Everyone bad time. Uh, everyone will should take the opportunity to clean out the loan and show high losses because everyone also so high show high losses. What uh, then take the opportunity to clean out everything. Uh, you show high losses also okay, but when things recover, you, people don't expect to see it. If you don't do it anymore, <laughs> so that's yep. why I look at whether it's industry or country or just uh, it's only your company specific. Hmm. Mm. Right. Thanks for shedding light on this. Um. The next question is um sometimes um there's a, a profit improvement as for per the uh, earnings per share growth, but how come the net tangible asset will decline for that quarter? Uh, how can this happen? So this is one of the questions oh. on my panel. Uh, check through whether you no know, they pay out dividend or not. Okay. Uh, so we check through uh, and then or high position, high uh, what do you call it? Uh, they, uh, the translation, uh, the trans not translation. They are the basically they are items that actually you know they uh translate the write down on equity portion. That's why you you can only see from the comprehensive uh the statements. So they may are items are not. Charge through the PL, but actually look through from the the what they call uh the the write downs on the the equity portions. So may affect the NDAs or they pay high dividends. All right, thanks, uh Mr. Wing. Um the next question is by Ahmad Amzar. Yeah. So when a company issues new shares for financial assistance such as ESOS, RI, etc. Is it considered as warning signs for the company? Uh, ESOS. R right ESOS, issue, I... you know. Right issue or ESOS, right? Okay. ESOS is okay. Okay. ESOS is okay because uh they I mean we can understand they want to have ESOS so that no they you need to perform this, then only can can exercise no, no, all the ESOS, otherwise the ESOS becomes zero, okay? Uh, so that means normally the exercise price actually should be higher, okay? Uh, then they have staggered of that exercise price, it's okay. But for the right issues, uh, investor <laughs> want to have a bonus issue, don't want to see the right issues. Uh. So because you, the moment you you give dividend to us already, then they, after a few years, then you ask us to to put, give you back the, 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 the money that we get from you because you did call for right issues. So for those uh, high capex companies, uh, for example, airline business, uh, so normally uh, you notice that uh, uh, very hard, very hard. I mean, always call for right issues. Uh, then you see uh, sometimes uh, they they continue to put money and then the business continue not doing well. Okay, uh, So investors sometimes uh, the moment call for right issue, you see sometimes actually investors not happy with, with that. All right, thanks, uh, Mr. Nguyen, for your view. Um, the next question is by Kennedy. So what are your opinions on PN17 companies? Would you advise us to continue investing on them? Uh, PN17 depends on what type of uh, which ones. Uh, okay, then to me, PN17, look at uh, whether they have any, some actually, you know, they continue to have a new 
business want to inject in discussions and then fail and then approval all this so some actually PN17 actually turned out to be okay I think there's one of them actually uh, come uh, com, com, uh, com court or something like that I can't remember the name already the share price jumped to high levels <laughs> uh, so sometimes they're able to get out from the PN17 then with the new business then you can only grow so in Malaysia <laughs> uh, it's always like that Okay, uh, I'm not too sure the information right now. I mean, the numbers right now. Last time I, I know is actually, you know, uh, you, in, you invest uh, a number of companies. Uh, a lot of times, uh, some may be good, some may have problems. Uh, okay, so you need to check through. So some actually, you know, try is actually to, to write down. Then uh, in Malaysia, uh, in, in general, if you're not careful with the companies, the certain companies, uh, then how they turn around basically is that the new investor come in, they inject new business, then they change the company name. Then uh then to to certain investors, uh, because you never pay attention to your stocks, right? So suddenly, hey, then you call a reminder, say, hey, what happened to my stocks? Uh? Then your reminder mentioned you, hey, change name ready. Ha, huh? my change company change name ready. Uh? Uh, <laughs> then you try, hey. then you check through, okay, no, okay. Well, I thought I have 10 lots. Why why suddenly suddenly one lot only? Uh, then because you write down uh, then share consolidation then the change name uh, sometimes actually like that so to me basically is that uh, first is look through what are business you inject in what are new owners and then uh, any future plan uh, if you don't have then he think it's actually you know uh, basically you know then you need to ask yourself whether you still want to hold that company or not because sometimes uh, you have no choice then have to cut loss with you uh, so this cannot means cannot okay some cannot means cannot so they mm. listed one quite tough already mm, all right thanks for a view on uh, investing in pn17 companies uh, now talking about change of management and change of name right uh the following uh follow-up questions from michael wing is that you know um so he would like to know more about the change of management recently there's one uh outsource semiconductor assembly test company when the founder sold his stake to a new man management, which is not uh, ex an expert in this field. So what is your view on this? Uh? Uh, so be careful. So is it cash out from the, by the owners? So if let's say cash out, then look through. Uh, that's why we, sometimes we don't know, okay? The new management, whether it's actually really have a skill. Uh, if really, if you look through the profile, don't have a skill, then be careful. So uh, quite hard to say whether uh, we really may have a certain experts or third party to, to run for them or whatever, we don't know. So the buyer, uh, my view is all, uh, always the, you know, because I'm a business valuer. So my view is always when the buyer buys certain things, uh, they know what they're buying. Sellers, when they sell certain things, also know what they're selling. So that's, they, they know what they're selling. So the buyer, if I say the amount is big, the buyers don't know what they're buying. So the key, key part basically is that we need to look through whether the the behind, what actually the ultimate objective, sometimes we may not know. That's actually uh, the main things. Uh, we, we may need to find out from them. Okay. So, but on paper, sometimes I agree that sometimes we, it appears that the, the buyer may not have the knowledge. Uh, yes. So, but we don't know, seriously don't know, no. uh, the the ultimate of, uh, motive behind it. So sometimes we don't know. Okay, If the amount is big, then something you need to investigate further. I will not say that just because they don't have the knowledge, then it means no good. I will not say that. I will say need to look through, uh, need to dig up further. Sir. That's why uh, I always ask, why you want to buy eh, the business? Eh? <laughs> then they will give you other information because of this, uh, this, this, this. So, so sometimes this uh, information may not be available to the public so we don't know seriously we don't know so they may have certain things behind we don't know then unless you have the chance to ask them then they give you the information sir. thanks so much mr Wing, for your view now uh in a annual report right and also the quarterly report uh the management often write about their comment comments on the future prospect right so uh the question by jason is how reliable are these comments Okay, I give you one, one, I, I, I don't like uh, the management say this. I don't like, I ask you, uh, a lot of owners actually like to say, it's actually, uh, we are cautiously optimistic of the 
or our future performance. I ask you, what is cautiously optimistic? Okay, I don't like these statements. Why? Because if let's say the result turned out to be bad, you say I cautious ready man. I already cautious you ready man. Cautious ready man. Then the result turned turn out to be good. I say cautious optimistic man. Optimistic man. So basically, yeah, any management say cautiously optimistic as good as saying nothing because they cover both sides. Uh, are you cautious you ready man? So my view is actually when you look at the future prospect. Good one tend to be scared you, <laughs> really scared you. Mm. But the result will be okay, consistently okay. But uh, bad one will be they, every year in losses. Then <laughs> every year you look through the future prospect, future prospect. They say we are optimistic on the, the company performance. Uh, we are bullish. How can you be bullish when you every year in losses? <laughs> uh, then that you know that that owner is a telling lie. So you can write off this, this kind of owners. Uh. Next time, whatever he says, uh, don't trust that whatever they, whatever they say. Uh. Uh, so, so my view is basically is that this is actually a part where you check through. The best is actually look at two, three years annual reports, compare what they say and what is actual performance. If they continue to tell lie, then you know this company, the owner cannot be trusted. All right. Look yeah. the past, a few years annual report, they always say what in the end, what happened? So you take a three years and reports good enough to know if they continue to tell line, then uh, uh, forget it. These are owners don't need. There's so many company, good company. Why don't you look at them? All right, thanks for your view. Uh. I think unfortunately, I always see this cautiously optimistic <laughs> in the comment of future prospect. <laughs> Have you seen any company that say I'm uh, pessimistic? <laughs> oh God, 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 God. Yeah, they, they are. Some, some, some. They are very really honest. <laughs> and it, and you, they didn't result them to be bad. Uh, so, but not not as bad as what they they, they say lah. Sometimes they really scared you. <laughs> they really scared. So, uh, I think you do have some good. Really tell you the truth. So they are they have very tough time. But sometimes actually you, the the way they write, we really scared. No, really that bad. Then result, even though decline, but they actually not really that bad lah. Sometimes they actually try to warn you lah. They actually they going to report bad results. So. We do have this style of owners, I think, quite, quite good. Okay. They tell the mm. truth. Mm. Yeah. All right. Maybe I can draw attention to this uh, qualified opinion by the accountants. Uh, sometimes the auditor will, will have a qualified opinion. Uh. When, when this happens, right, what, what should we do? Uh, as I said to you, these are the moment qualified opinion basically is that she, like I said to you, there's some cockroach theory already. <laughs> basically, at the back, so many cockroaches already. So my view is actually the moment qualified of the opinion only uh, they back the back all cockroaches. Uh. So immediately is cut losses. <laughs> basically mm. we're gonna have raw problems. We don't know what's gonna happen. Uh. So basically it's like uh, normal investors, you see this, then you ask yourself uh, what are the pro potential problems. So you see the normal smart investor will be immediately they just cut losses. They get off first, wait until the, the things clear. Uh, when I see the actual results, then okay, then because I don't know, uh, so so I also don't know how big the holdings are. So to them, it's actually read, read through this cut first. After all, if let's say it will drop further, and the big funds, uh, especially good one, uh, big fund need to offload, uh, they also get scared, right? So they take times to sell sell down, uh, especially nowadays we are talking about ESG, uh, so ESG problem we have the uh, environment, social, and governance. Uh, so a lot of funds actually need to fulfill is EAG. So especially certain funds, they do have a you no know, because of EAG uh, investing uh, guideline all this. So the moment a certain company are unable to fulfill only because these are corporate governance uh, so you see the sell down heavy sell down. If you will not drop sell down one day, you know, many days, uh, uh, weeks. Uh. So that's why uh, to the smart investor is I cut loss first. If really good, then I'll buy back later. I, after all, I know that you, you will drop from now on for a few days. Mm, Especially all right. good companies. Thanks for the view. So the next question is by uh, Mei Yue. What do you think of these uh, those PN17 companies that did not submit their regular, uh, regularization plan within the Bursa stipulated timeline? <laughs> go, go with the delisted soon already. <laughs> Cut losses. Uh. <laughs> mm, mm, all right. Uh, thanks for a view. Um, having having said about this, uh, delisted right. So Kenny would like to ask this question: When a company got 
privatized and delisted? What rights do the shareholders have? I think you are holding uh, non-listed companies. Uh, then uh, I think someone will contact you if let's say the company have a lot of assets. So they will ask you, because if let's say drop to a few cents, eh, for example, this company may have 20 cents NDA, but the share price dropped to one cent. So basically they on purpose let it drop to one cent. So yes, you notice that someone buying one cent, one cent. So in the end, someone will call you, you know, if let's say you own a lot of shares, they will call you. Then it says that, uh, you don't mind, you know, I, I buy back, I buy from you two cents. So, you know, it's a 10 cents, uh, 20 cents NDA. Eh? Then basically, it's, then that collectors actually will buy from you. You, you know, it's before closing, you see one cent only. Then you buy from you two cents. You say 100% return ready, <laughs> as compared to the price that you delisted. Then they accumulate from all the retails, then plus all the don't know, whatever stress they get cut from the banks or whatever, everything's. Then they actually you know, sell off the assets and it's okay, make good good returns. After all, they buy from you at 2 cents only, and then from the market, 1 cent only. So they make because the NDA is 20 cents. Then they ask bank to you know, write off you know, the haircut, all this you know, in the end. Then they sell out, sell out the assets, they still can get good returns. Uh, we have in the market, we do have people actually doing that. In, in for those actually know how to invest into distress investing. Uh, they they can get good returns, uh, especially you know the value of the assets. So you know how to you know, deal with the banks and uh, all this. This one highly skilled areas are uh, not everyone, not anybody can know how know how to how to uh to do the the whole restructuring and take offload all these assets and realize the, the returns. All right. Uh thanks so much. Now uh let's say a company is having a lot of uh, material litigation. Do you think we should avoid this kind of company? As I mentioned to you, this are litigation, whether they sue people or being sued, uh, the owner have no time on their business. Basically, they talk to the lawyer every day. So these are owners actually don't think of their any future prospect. Okay? Not, no, mm. no, no, nothing there. Okay? So uh, my view here basically is that uh, uh, like that, Okay, because I have value one company before. <laughs> I I look through the, the so many pages of litigation. So I also look through the board director minutes. Uh so basically uh, the whole board director minutes actually not talking about future prospect, talking about all litigation. The two hour plus every meeting only talk about litigation only. So I look at the minutes, basically talk about litigation only. Then why should I read through the litigation? I already know because the quarterly result already I already know of whatever. And I also, as a valuer, I don't need to know how, whether you win the case, lose the case. I only ask you, want to ask you, especially any further, any further impairment or not. That's that's most important questions. Uh, you tell me what any further imp impairment or not. Uh, that's the most important. All right. Uh, thanks, Mr. Wing. Now the next question is by Hafiq. Uh, how about a spin-off company from the parents' company? And uh, sometimes the reason they gave is that you now they say the company is uh, want to be more uh, focused in the selected field of expertise, right? So what is your opinion? Okay. Some Sun's people was quite okay. I think the Sun Dhabi one actually quite okay. Uh, and then um, Hap Seng, the Mozet and Mozet spin off okay. And then spin off from uh, things, things uh, some actually, I think the Sun Dhabi in, in general the spin off quite okay. Uh, but uh, you need to look through, uh, okay. Uh, so the some spin off you need to look through. Uh, so uh, in generals like Hapsing, Hapsing spin off Hapsing plantations. I think look down to be okay. Uh, so you need to look through. Uh, not every time spin off okay. So uh, you need to look through. Uh, all right. Uh, thanks for sharing your view. Um, the next question, let's do this as last question from Mr. Yap is that uh, uh, how about companies with high stock turnover rate? Is it normal for these kind of companies to have negative net operating cash flow? Uh, high stock turnover. It means you're yeah. referring to the trading volume turnover or you're talking about the inventory, the stock turnover. Okay. I believe you're talking about the the trading volume stock turnover, right? Uh, so if let's say 
I just answer two these two. Lah. So if let's say trading volume high turnover, so and every day high turnover means someone is buying, someone is selling. So need to look through a lot of time. Someone have the inside information buying, someone have the inside information selling. So what the ultimate objective yet to be seen. Okay, wait for clearer signs. If let's say the price keep on in, in sharp, that means the one one buying, one know what they're buying. So they don't mind paying higher price. Uh, so a lot of time maybe imply good news. Uh, that's actually uh, for talking about trading volume. For those, if let's say it's a stock, it's actually due to the inventory. Then look through uh, whether is it due to the unable to sell the, the, the inventory or not. So depends on, as I mentioned to you, the sound, Badinis and the, uh, for example, like Pokong. Pokong, the inventory. Uh, basically, po Pokong, the inventory day uh, is the last time. I'm not too sure right now. Last time is... Uh, I analyze the counter actually is uh, 270 days. Uh, <clears throat> meaning to say when you buy jewelry from Pukong, uh, it's actually, you know, the nine months of holding periods. Uh. So that's why when they expand to the new outlets, uh, you see the inventory go up, no? they continue to open outlets, then the inventory will go up. So then you don't worry, you know, because the inventory go up, gone up is because they expand to new outlets, same as Padini, all this. So that's why sometimes they need to look through the inventory is actually from that perspective. Uh. Okay, so uh, depends on which which one. Okay, I hope I answered your questions. Yep. Uh, all right. Thanks, Mr. Ui, for doing this uh, very engaging Q and A sessions. Of course, we still have many questions on the panel, uh, yeah. which are not able to uh, ask at the moment. So, uh, but don't worry. If given any opportunity, we will bring back uh, Mr. Ui for the next session with us. All right. Thanks, Mr. Wing, for your time. And before we go off, uh, let me introduce to you to some tools that uh, Bursa Malaysia have uh, in store for you. Uh, if you go to bursamalaysia.com, you can actually explore this uh, My Bursa. And if, if you click on My Bursa, it will take you to this portal, okay, which is uh, My Bursa portal. Under My Bursa, there are a lot of knowledge and there are a lot of market information for you. Uh, under this uh, there are also various tools you can explore. There are filters who can help you to filter and identify assets that meet your investment needs. And there are also heat map. You know, heat map is uh, very common. Uh, you know, heat map gives you a, a visual idea about what had happened to uh, the stock market on that day. Uh, the one with a larger screw, uh, rectangle would means that you know, they command a, a larger market cap. The one with a more uh, vivid color would mean that you know, they have... Uh, a greater volatility during that day. So you can check out Hitman on uh, my Bursa and also Screener. They can help you to uh, filter stock that meet your criteria. For instance, uh, if you want to filter stocks that have, you know, let me uh, give me uh, uh, Let's go to uh, a financial, you know, they have a, um, you know, a year on year growth in terms of profit. Okay, uh, let's say a 15% gain in terms of profit, you know, uh, revenue, and then 20% uh, uh, gain in terms of uh, Profit, you know, or even uh, analysts give a good rating, okay, you can submit and then it can help you to filter, okay, or um, you can uh, key in the, uh, the analyst, okay, I think it's under fundamental, analyst recommendation, let's say outperform or buy, you know, these two uh, uh, rating. And then you want market cap that's more than say uh, uh, 1 billion, okay, you type 1000 million. Okay, then of, of course, you can have to do a uh, screening. Okay, that meets your criteria. All right. So uh, these are screeners that's provided by uh, my Bursa. All right. So I uh, hope we can take uh, advantage of these tools that are provided by Bursa Malaysia. So for our uh, next webinar is titled... Uh, uh, maximum gun keuntungan dengan trading plan ya betul happening on the 6th of May 2024 8.30 to 10 p.m. So if you want to register, you can uh, click on the link that I've just uh, given you in the chat box. And uh, if you haven't checked out Bursa Investment Quiz yet, you may uh, actually uh, uh, scan the QR code. Uh, this is an investment quiz that's open to uh, Malaysian between the ages of 18 years old and 30 years old. So if you join this quiz, you will stand a chance to win amazing prizes, okay? Uh, so if you think that you have um, good investment knowledge, you can come and test yourself in this Bursa Investment Quiz. It is for uh, Malaysian between the ages of 18 and 30 years old. All right, the champion will with 6,000 ringgit, followed by uh, 4,000 ringgit for the first runner-up, 2,000 ringgit for the second runner-up, and 1,000 ringgit and 500 ringgit for the consolation prizes winners. All right, so it's happening on the 7th May, 14th May, and 21st of May, okay, for the grand finale. 
So if you want to open a stock trading account, you may scan a QR code or click the link that is just given you. And that would be the end of this session. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ui, for uh, doing this session for us, which is how to detect financial warnings in the company. Hope that you have gained enormous value learning from Mr. Ui today. So thank you so much, Mr. Ui, and hope you all have a great day. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you.